In other words, the intensely serious preoccupations and anxieties of mankind appear from this standpoint not to be foolishness, but to be a kind of marvel. In the same way, perhaps, as you could say, that the protective coloring of a butterfly who has somehow contrived to make its wings look like enormous eyes, so that when a bird who is about to devour this beast is confronted by these staring eyes, the bird is a little hesitating, as when you stare at somebody, they're always taken a little bit aback. And so the butterfly appears to stare at the bird. And perhaps you see this phenomenon of the marvelous staring wings of the butterfly is in some way a result of anxiety. The anxiety to survive, all the problems and struggles of natural selection. Nevertheless, in this intense struggle. We are unknowing poets. You see, one of the greatest ideas in the world that has ever been produced is, for my thinking, the Hindu idea that the world is a drama in which the central and supreme self behind all existence gets lost and involved and pretends, plays that he or it or he she or whatever you want to call it is all the creatures that there are and gets totally involved and thus you see the more involved the more anxious the more finite the more limited the infinite manages to feel itself to be. The greater the artistry, the greater the depth of the illusion which is created, for you see all art is in a way illusion. The art of the magician is the art of illusion, the art of misdirecting attention so that the magic seems to appear. So in this way, the more there is anxiety, the more there is uncertainty to that degree the play has succeeded in the same way as when you are watching an actual play or reading a novel or a movie, the more the author or the actors manage to grip you and to persuade you just for a moment that you are actually involved in reality, the more they have succeeded as artists. You may have a faint recognition in the back of your mind that this is after all only a play. When you sit on the edge of your seat and you're sweating and your hands touch the arms of the chair. The scene so grips you. That is magnificent acting. And so the Hindus feel that the whole arrangement of the cosmos is something exactly like that. But when in the reality of actual life, you are sweating it out, and you're wondering whether this surgeon has got to operate on you in a matter of life and death is a competent man or a charlatan or whether the investment that you made is a good thing or whether it's going to make you lose your shirt. You see, all those matters of terrific crisis are exactly the same as when you're sitting in the theatre, sweating it out there. But now, a far more convincing theatre has been arranged. Because 
as the Hindus would say, that in you which is it, the basis of you, the thing that is real in you and that connects you under the surface with every other being that is alive. This is the player of the past. This is the maker of the illusion. This is the player of the game which has got you involved in this mess and is living it up in the same way as those actors on the stage are living it up to convince you that this is a real situation. And this is very understandable because basically everybody loves to play this game. The game of hide and seek. The game of scaring oneself. Running up behind yourself in the dark and saying, BOOM! All children like to do this. And this is the most human thing. That's why we go to the play, to the movie, and why we read novels. And our so-called real life is from the position of the mystic an extension of the same thing. Because, you see, he is the person who suddenly has realized that the game is a game. And that behind all... See, if the game is hide and seek, or if the game is lost and found, everything to do with the hide side, side or the lost side is connected with where we as individuals feel lonely, impotent, put down, and so on. All the, the negative side of existence. I have tried to show you at various times that there's really one simple principle that underlies everything. And it's so simple, it's funny. The principle is, all insides have outsides. Because you see, you don't know that the inside is inside unless there's an outside. And you don't know that the outside is outside unless there's an inside. Okay, then you as you ordinarily feel yourself are the inside. You are the animate, sensitive being inside the skin. But the inside of the skin goes with the outside of the skin. If there weren't the outside of the skin, there wouldn't be no inside. And the outside of the skin is the whole darn cosmos. Galaxy beyond galaxy and everything, you see? And that goes with the outside, in the same way that front goes with back. So that if you wake up and understand that, you find that the two are one and the same identity, one and the same self, one and the same life. So that's the mystic's point of view. He finds that out. <laughs>